Hey everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel. In today's video, despite the familiar setup, I'm going to be doing something a little different. Instead of playing Phase 10 Chooses Your TBR, I'm going to be sharing with you my TBR for Phase Out Your TBR. So this is a readathon I am hosting in the entire month of November that I have based on my TBR game. And despite my better judgment, I'm actually going to play my TBR game twice. So there's lots of ways you can do this. I created four boards that represent all of the cards in the deck 1 through 12 for each color. And you have to complete phase 1, which is two sets of three. You can do this however you want. You can look at the prompts and decide which ones work best for you. You can randomize it, or you can do like what I'm going to do and, well draw for it. There will be some slight differences between this and my game. The main prompts I have to finish are the ones that complete my set. The rest are kind of optional and I don't need to complete them. There will be no punishments or rewards added to my board and this part of my board does not matter right now because like I said I have created very specific prompts for each card. So just very quickly we have our red prompts, our blue prompts, our yellow prompts, and our green prompts. So as you can see, those will be the prompts that I will be picking from. And we're going to try to get two sets of three as quickly as possible. If I pull a wild, it will work like my game and I will roll a die to determine how many extra draws I have to pull. This is not going to factor into my TBR game at all. This is just for fun. And my whole goal is to pull books off of my shelves. They need to be books that I own. Because the idea is, is using phase 10 to get rid of books on your own TBR. So we're going to see how the game goes and whether it'll be nice to me or not. So our first card is going to be a green six. So the prompt for green six is to start a series and I'm going to go with the broken spine. This is the first book in a cozy mystery series and we're following a small town assistant librarian who discovers that protecting the printed word is harder than she ever imagined. In fact, it's murder. So we're going to have an assistant librarian who discovers a murder. I love cozy mysteries and this is my favorite time of year to read them, so hopefully I love the start to the series. Our second draw gets me an eight. So the prompt for blue eight is book with a map, and for this I'm going to read The Night Diary. This is a historical fiction, and we have a map right here, and we're following 12-year-old Nisha. It's 1947, and India has been newly freed from British rule and has been divided into Pakistan and India. This is going to be told through Nisha's letters to her mother and is a heartfelt story of one girl's search for home, for her own identity, and for a hopeful future. I'm hoping to enjoy this one and I'm quite looking forward to this one. I'm kind of in the mood for historical fiction, so I'm really excited to be able to add it to my TBR. Our third prompt is a seven. So far, we're, we're not doing great on the sets. I've got a run going, but not a set. So the prompt for yellow seven is no people on the cover. And for this, I'm going to go with My Very Good, Very Bad Dog, 101 Heartwarming Stories About Our Happy, Heroic, and Hilarious Pets. I have read a lot of Chicken Soup when I was younger. It's been a while since I've read one, and I've had this one on my shelves for quite a while. So I'm hoping to enjoy some really fun dog stories. Our fourth poll is a wild, which means I'll have to roll a die. However, I can use this as any number I want. So thumbs up for that. Our fifth poll is a three. Yes, I mean, I've got options. Eventually I'm gonna have to run into a double, right? So the prompt for blue three is new to you author. And for this, I'm going to be reading Field of Screams by Wendy Paris. This is one of my fall covers, so I'll be going into it blind, but I've never read anything by this author before and it feels very spooky and very fall-like and I'm still very much in that kind of mood. So I thought it was a good excuse to stick it on a TBR. Our sixth draw is another wild. That's just lovely. However, I technically have the ability to very easily gain two sets, so bright side. Our seventh draw is a three, so I have my first set. It's going to be a set of threes. So the prompt for yellow three is image on the spine, and for this I'm going to read The Vanda Breakers and The Hidden Garden. This is the second book in the Van Beeker series, and it is also a fall cover because look at all those fall trees. So it is another book I will be going into blind. And the image on the spine is right there. So we have a kind of view of the trees on the cover. So that is going to count for image on the spine. I really, really enjoyed book one. So I'm hoping that I love book two as well. It follows a family 
with like I think like five kids and in the first one they're about to be evicted right before Christmas and try to convince their landlord to not evict them. It was really fun, really good family vibes. So again, I'm hoping I love the second one and that it's set in fall so that I can have at least one correct for my fall covers video. So draw number eight, if I can get a six, eight or seven, I have completed my phase and I can move on to my wild rolls. So draw number eight, nope, five, we're, we're still going here. So the prompt for blue five is low hopes. And for this, I'm going to read Send For Me. I do own the book, but it is in the other room. And I have a cat right now who keeps trying to help. So she's currently shut in the room where this book is. And I don't want to have to go in there to try to get it. I know it's a historical fiction. It was a book of the month pick. And the reason I have low hopes for this is because I know it is the second lowest rated book on my TBR. And I've heard like nobody talk about it. So I'm going into it with relatively low hopes and low expectations because I'm not expecting it to be my brand new most favorite book. So that will be what I read for low hopes. So for draw number nine, we have a skip, which means I just completely skip this prompt. I don't have to pick anything for it, which is nice. Then we have a green four. So still not another set. This is getting dangerous, guys. So the prompt for green four is even page number, and I'm going to go with Wish Upon a Sleepover. This is another fall cover. As you can see, I'm trying to get some of my obligation reads on my TBR because that will make it easier for me in the months going forward. This book clocks in at 208 pages, so it ends in an even page number. This book gives me lots of fall vibes. It's a middle grade. I do know that much, so hopefully it'll be a quick, easy read, and I will enjoy it. Not bad. So far, I've managed to get three of my five fall covers on my TBR. I'm not going to complain. Draw number 11 is a one. I'm going to get every number on the board, and I'm apparently no reds. So the prompt for green one is lowest rated. As I mentioned, send for me was my lowest rated, which means I went to my next lowest rated, and that is great cat tales. This illustrated collection represents the best of cat stories chosen for cat lovers by cat lovers. Anyone who has ever shared a home with a cat knows how charming, playful, and unpredictable they can be, so it is not surprising that they have proved inspiration for various authors. So, I don't know much about this, but it is not very high rated. I think it's like a 3.44. But I guess I will be reading it in the month of November, and uh, now I have a dog book and a cat book on my TBR. Interesting. My next draw is a wild. I'll take it. Three wilds, which means I have to roll my die three times. I'm not happy about that, but it means I have completed my set and I, ooh, I get to pick. Okay, so I'm obviously going to go for threes, so I need to pick another three prompt. Now, I can pick any of the four prompts I want, so my options are nature on the cover, single POV, new to you author, or image on the spine. And I think, continuing the theme, I'm going to go with nature on the cover because we have all of these leaves. And this is another fall cover. And this one gives me kind of spooky vibes. So I think I'm going to go with that. This is an Owl Crate book. I don't know anything about it. But I definitely want to read it and check it out. And I'm hoping it'll be A, set in fall, and B, give me all of those spooky vibes. And it works for nature on the cover. Then I have to decide what prompts I want to use my other wilds for. So let me take a peek and I'll be right back. So after looking at my options of six, eight, seven, five, one, and four, I have decided to go with the fours. So my options for fours are even page number, middle grade, big book, and pretty cover. I have decided to do middle grade, and for that I'm going to read The Treehouse Library. This is a five-star prediction and is the fifth book in the Pages & Co. series. This follows Tilly, who is a book wanderer, and that means she can enter into books and pull her favorite characters out of books. I've absolutely adored this series. Again, five-star prediction, so I obviously think I'm going to love it, and it works perfectly for this prompt, and I'm very excited to dive into this one. And then I'm going to use Pretty Cover, and for this I'm going to go with Scander and the Phantom Rider because I think this is just an absolutely stunning cover with the unicorn here and this unicorn made out of water and just all of the blues and the foiling. This really, really draws me in. 
This is the second book in the Scander series, and this is another five-star production, so I'm expecting to love it. In the first book, we meet Scander, and he wants to become a unicorn rider, and there's a lot of drama around that, and it is not as easy to accomplish as he thinks it's going to be, and we kind of see his journey where he learns that not everything that's going on meets the eye, and he has to kind of struggle through that. I believe I gave the first book four and a half stars, so I'm very excited to dive back into Scander's story, and I hopefully we'll give this one the full five. So my first wild, we're going to roll and we're going to get a three. Okay, three. Our first three prompts are going to be a green five. So the prompt for green five is LGBTQIA plus rep. And for this, I'm going to dip into my ebook TBR and read Tell Me How It Ends by Quentin Lee. According to Goodreads, it's a coming of age cozy fantasy with a queer cast, witches, and tarot. Iris Galicia's tarot cards do more than entertain gamblers. With the flip of her fingers, she can predict the future and uncover a person's secrets. But under the watchful eye of her mother, she is on thin ice for pursuing a passion in the family business. And then cracks start to form until eventually she falls through. She is given an ultimatum, a test to prove her worth. Earn a thousand coins or leave the business and the family. Enter Marin Bordeaux, a charming young person who can scale buildings and break off doorknobs, who comes for her help to rescue a witch who's been falsely imprisoned in ex Kava kingdom. And Marin is willing to pay a high sum for her talents. Saving a prisoner from royal hands isn't easy, nor is leaving home for the first time in 18 years. Now Iris must learn to trust herself, Marin, and this new magical world, we're erasing the clock before the royals decide the fate of the witch and before any secrets catch up to her. Tell Me How It Ends features LGBTQ+, disabled, neurodivergent, cultural, and mental health representation. The main character, Iris Galicia, is a lesbian tarot card reader with anxiety and autism. And the second main character, Marin Bordeaux, is an aromantic, asexual, non-binary person with ADHD. Well, I've checked all of the bingo box pretty much for representation, haven't I? I did not realize that book had that much rep, but it definitely has plenty of LGBTQIA plus rep, so I definitely think this is the perfect choice for that prompt. So our next poll is a red seven. Finally, a red. So the prompt for red seven is five or more words in the title, and for this, I'm going to read The Lighthouse Between the Worlds. It follows Griffin and his father, and they tend to a lighthouse on the craggy coast of Oregon. There are hardly ever visitors, but they like it that way. So when a group of oddly dressed strangers appears, Griffin begins to see just how many secrets his father has been keeping. He never imagined that his lighthouse contains a portal to strange and dangerous worlds, or that a society of lighthouse keepers exists to protect Earth from a fearsome enemy invasion. But then Griffin's father is unexpectedly pulled through the lens of the lighthouse into the one of the other worlds, with his father gone, no one from the society is giving Griffin any answers, so he's on his own. Armed only with a book of mysterious notes and drawings from his parents, Griffin is determined to find his dad no matter what dangers lurk on the other side of the portal. So it sounds like it's going to be quite interesting. It's going to be kind of mysterious, maybe a bit spooky, maybe even a bit sci-fi, depending on where these other strange visitors come from. And it has one, two, three, four, five words in the title. You would not believe how hard that was to find. Apparently, I only have short titles on my TBR right now. And our third prompt for this wild is a yellow one. So the prompt for yellow one is air on the cover. And for this, I'm going to go with apartment 1986. This is my final fall cover. So maybe I can get to all of them this month. That would be quite different. As you can see, we have sky and wind, and that is all considered part of the air because you can actually almost see the air moving with the wind lines. Again, fall cover, so going into it blind. And we'll see if I can actually get through all five of them in November because that would be quite something, but why not pull from books I need to read in the next few months anyways? Our roll for my second wild is, ooh, a two. Nice, I can handle that. The first is going to be a green two. The prompt for Green 2 is Animal on the cover, and while well, I would just be silly not to use one of these books, so I'll be reading A Thief in ThunderClan. This is a graphic novel in the Warrior series, and as you can see, we have cats on the cover. They count as Animals. Warriors is one of my favorite series, and this is one of the handful of books I have not read. Plus, it, you know, is a graphic novel, so it should be a rather quick read and is one I was hoping to get to this month anyways, so seems like a no-brainer. The second of this 
wild prompts is going to be a green 11. So the prompt for green 11 is YA, and I'm going to go with Midnight at the Electric by Jody Lynn Anderson. This has three timelines, Kansas in 2065, Oklahoma in 1934, and England in 1919. It says, well, their stories span thousands of miles and multiple generations. Lenore, Catherine, and Adri's fates are entwined in ways both heartbreaking and hopeful. And Jody Lynn Anderson's signature haunting lyrical prose, human connections spark spellbindingly to life. And a bright light shines on the small but crucial moments that determine one's fate. So Adri is going to be going to Mars. Catherine is living during the Dust Bowl and Lenore is dealing with the fallout from World War I. This is a historical fiction sci-fi, which is a little different and it is marked on Goodreads as YA. I am very, very curious to see how these stories kind of connect, especially given the large gap between the first two and the like future version. So we'll see how this goes. And then for my last wild roll, hopefully, uh, ooh, a one. It was a one. We have a one. So just whatever this is, unless it's a wild, I'm done. And it is a yellow 12. So the prompt for yellow 12 is space on the cover. So I'm going to go with moon shadow because there's a giant moon and even what looks like might be little dots representing stars. It says Lucia was born during a lunar eclipse, though her mom has always told her eclipse are magical. Lucia doesn't buy into new age nonsense. Magic involving shadows, dreams, and moonstones. She doesn't have time for any of that stuff. All she wants is to figure out how to get her best friend back and cope with her parents' divorce. But on Lucia's 13th birthday, the night of the next lunar eclipse, something strange happens. When the moon slips into the Earth's shadow, Lucia's shadow slips out. Now this shadow half waits for Lucia to sleep so it can come out and play. Lucia's shadow seems unlike her in every way, daring, outspoken, and unwilling to let anyone push her around. At first, Lucia is eager to undo whatever magic happened on her birthday so life can go back to normal, but when she realizes her shadow is acting in ways she has only dreamed about, Lucia wonders if things aren't so bad after all. With a little help from her shadow, Lucia is turning into the girl she's always wanted to be. So we have our giant space on the cover. It sounds like it's going to be quite fantastical and kind of interesting and maybe something dealing with a bit of self-discovery, so hopefully I enjoy it. So this, along with Sun For Me and... Uh, tell me how it is, is my phase out your TBR, TBR. Oh, very heavy. I only need to read six of them. And for the life of me, I don't remember which six off the top of my head. I'll insert a picture of the stack that I absolutely have to read because I'm going to need to go back and watch this to figure out which books are required reads. But that's my required reads. The rest of these are going to be priorities for my Phase 10 TBR game, so you can look forward to watching that. I hope all of you are going to play along. I'm very excited to be doing this, and we'll see how round one goes. But that's it for this video. All of my social media is linked below if you'd like to come chat with me, and I will include a link to the Discord if you want to join in and play along with us. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me moon emojis in honor of Moonshadow, the last book I picked. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!